All right. We ready to go? All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. How are you all today? Good. 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 Uh, my name is Lacey. I work with Nelson County Public Library. I work with Children and Family Services. Important fun note, I was adult services until August of 21. So a lot of this stuff that um, we're going through with adults, that was me. Um, so, and then we've transitioned me to children's shortly after. So just a little caveat there, <laughs> let you know. And my name is Rachel Harris at the Nelson County Public Library and I also work in children's. I've been at children's the whole time. <laughs> um, quick note about our library. Um, we're, in, we're in Bardstown in that surrounding area. We have three branches and a bookmobile and we are a tax district. Just FYI. Yeah. Um, so. We are very fortunate to be a tax district um, and we fully acknowledge that we are fully fortunate in that. But everything that we are doing here, we are very frugal with. Um, it can be done on literally any budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. All, All right. right. So let's go back in time a little bit to March of 2020. We won't spend just, long just, there. Just for a second. Just, just for, for a second. second. So, you know, the whole world closed down, including the library. And of course they said it was only gonna be two weeks. And I don't know, like some of us were pretty naive. Like, oh yeah, two, two weeks will be fine. Like I remember calling a performer during those two weeks to try and book someone for the summer, assuming that, oh, it'll be fine. It wasn't fine. But um, <laughs> once we realized that two weeks was gonna turn into like, two years and counting or things like that, we realized that we needed to, to do something. We needed to take action for our people. Um, some background info about Nelson County. Um, our library was completely shut down for two months and then we were on curbside for about a year. Somewhere in the middle there, we had um, limited capacity. We opened up yeah. for like a month or two and then had to go back to curbside. We've been fully open since May of 2021. We were yes. a polling station, so we had to open. Yes. So some of the stuff that we talk about throughout this, um, you just keep that in mind. Like we, Some of it was while we were at home and we couldn't be in the library. Some of it started or continued while we were, we were able to be in the library, but our patrons weren't. And then some of it has bled over into being back open. So that gives you an idea like where we were during all of that. Yeah. And we call our presentation Be the Chameleon because there's a lot of things you got to do. You got to adapt. Um, mm -hmm. I had to adapt to a lot of children's stuff. You're welcome. Um, Thanks. <laughs> um, with all the mandates and all the shifting of everything else, we had to adapt. You had to throw the old notion of this is how it always is out the window. Mm -hmm. You had to throw that out and you have to uh, move along, if you will. Um, we had this for summer reading of 21. We had this Harry Potter program. A little fun story. Yeah. <laughs> and me being the adult programmer, I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna dress up. You know, we called it Espresso Patronum. It was pretty fun. We had it at a coffee shop. Yes. It was cool. <laughs> um, and I said, eh, I don't think I'm gonna dress up. It's the end of summer, I was tired. And it's, Rachel says- That's not an option. <laughs> I mean, I, it's it's not an option. Like, um, I make jokes that I'm like the Miss Frizzle. I'm not quite as big, but like, I do like, to, I do like a theme. So I was like, if, you're, if, if I'm gonna be Miss Frizzle and I'm gonna come in in my Harry Potter gear, you have to be my chameleon on my shoulder and you have to do the same. Yeah. Like, sorry, you have so to. So I wore my Hufflepuff shirt. <laughs> you're welcome. She came so. in and she said, I am the chameleon. So I am the chameleon. Here's where we are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you all are all programmers, correct? Or have some or form some. of something yeah. with programming. You all know. How do we serve our patrons? That's the driving question. Um, you all know this. Mm -hmm. When the patrons can't come, how can we take things to them? That was our driving question. It's like, well, they can't come in and we can't do any of this stuff, so what are we gonna do? So the answer was, we made a lot of virtual lemonade, y'all. A lot. A lot of it. Um, we had to be the chameleon. Mm -hmm. There were no longer adult programmers, team programmers, children's programmers. We were one, we were one unit. Mm -hmm. um, there was no longer, this is the New Haven branch, this is the Bloomfield branch. We were one branch and we had to be to survive. Yes. So some of the things that we did um, that says Quarantales on there, that was our cute name for our virtual story times that we did. Um, we love a good pun. Yes. Me and Lacey and our teen programmer, Holly, back there, we, we got on four times a week and did four story times a week virtually. 
That's a lot. <laughs> um, Holly moved her teen night to Zoom. Um, the, the adults, they did their book clubs, exercise, craft classes, whatever they could mm -hmm. online. And then especially once we were able to at least open up curbside, we started doing things like craft kits, book bundles, Wi-Fi hotspots for checkout. We're going to talk about all of that more mm -hmm. in depth throughout this. Any of this stuff sound familiar, similar stuff yes. you all did? And yeah. some of this stuff will be things that you all did. Maybe some of it might be something you didn't do, or maybe you did it, but in a different way than we did. Yes. So it's like a conversation of how, like, different sharing ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So in order to adapt, we're going to tell you a little story of the four C's. <laughs> to, first of all, you have to get out of your comfort zone. How many of y'all like to stay in your comfort zone? It's comfy, right? It's comfy, yeah? Well, get out of it. <laughs> all right, the comfort zone is where things go to die. All right, so you have to step out of your comfort zone. I, ha I don't have kids. I do not read stories to kids. Get out of your comfort zone. You gotta do it. You got to do it. And then you've also got to embrace the other three. It's technically four in a way. Technically four. Yeah. You have to be consistent, creative, you know, necessity, mother of invention, and our community connections. We're going to touch on all those. How many of y'all ever feel like that little cat right there? That cat, cat is me. Yeah. Um, we kind of joke a lot about how we compliment each other a lot in our, um, for the commitment claw. It's like, these are our strengths. These are our weaknesses. We cover each other's introvert. I'm not an introvert, She's not. <laughs> just in case you haven't noticed. So you got to kind of, you got to make it work. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So our first C was consistency. So going back again to 2020, just for a little bit, um, one of the things that we had to do was we wanted to keep a regular schedule. We wanted to be something that people could kind of rely on a little bit that they could count on. So we did our weekly story times. They were posted on a consistent schedule. We knew who was posting on what day. We tried to post around the same times each week. We did keep track of the algorithm because we were mostly posting on Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like certain times of day you get more traffic things like so more people could see it. But um, that consistency kind of like helped out a little bit. It gave us a little bit of a schedule because we, when we did our in-person story times, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you Wednesday at 10.30 is a story time. Thursday at 10 is a story time, things like that. So we did the same thing here. We kept a theme throughout the week because normally when we do our story times in person, you know, if you're doing farm week, you know, you read all your books about the farm. So between the three of us, we would all read the same mm -hmm. types of stories just to keep, keep some semblance of normalcy. Yes, that yes. was very important during that time because yes. normalcy was out the window. Um, our other programs like the teen and adult programs, um, we try to keep them at the same time that they would have mm -hmm. met in person, like yes. teen night meets on Thursdays from four to six. So when we went virtual, teen, might, teen night met on Thursdays from four to six on Zoom, you know, mm -hmm. so that was something that the teens could count on. Like they knew they could still get on their computer and they could still see Miss Holly and they could still see each other. Mm -hmm. um, our book clubs, they tried to do the same thing. Our exercise classes, um, some of them were, some of them did live, some of them did pre-recorded, but we tried to keep some consistency that the people, some sense of normalcy in the middle of everything. Um, as far as summer reading, we did not cancel summer reading. We just had to adapt it. We had to do everything curbside. Um, we had a couple of performers that we had already booked before March. And so we just moved them virtual so that we could have that consistent relationship with them too. Cause we knew that they were, they were also going to be suffering. Mm -hmm. So we just, our, our main goal was just to try and, try and make some lemonade out of all of this mess that we had. And our numbers for summer reading 2020 were like awful. It was but, awful. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure everybody's was, but um, the, the people that did, they really appreciated having yes. something there, having, yes. having that. Again, how can we bring the library to you? How can we serve you? Yes. That was what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing that, we would keep the things that worked so finding the adaptations, the times, and all that stuff, and being flexible but reliable. For example, technology. It's not our friend. Not very reliable a lot, right? So our technology, we had to, um, if we knew we were posting on a Wednesday, we tried to post at that time, but it didn't always make it. 
Uh, I remember Rachel had a kerfuffle with one of yes. hers. It was a it was a story that she had pre-recorded and it wouldn't upload on time. But it eventually did. And I spent it, the entire day trying to upload it to Facebook and then to YouTube. And then I finally got it almost done on YouTube. And it said, oh, this is too long. You have to click this button to get permission to post a longer video. So I clicked the button and they're like, okay, now you have to upload it again. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Four hours later. Yeah. <laughs> But we also acknowledge that. We're like, sorry, due to technical difficulties, this is what happened. My bad. And we posted it. Mm -hmm. It's like, so that was it. So it's just something that you can depend on. The library is nothing but dependable, right? Mm -hmm. If we're nothing, we're dependable. Um, And always have a plan B through C. Through Z. Through Z. Yeah, sorry. And then uh, this is the key thing is a lot of the stuff, we didn't know if it was going to work or not but don't be afraid to try something. I tried something with my people, like we tried a brown bag books program where like, it's like blind date with a book, but brown bags. And um, it flopped. Like I had like two people check something out. So it's like, you just acknowledge it, be like, huh, that didn't work. And then you move on, you learn from that and then you continue on. Um, How many of y'all perfectionists? Perfectionists, got any perfectionists in here? Yeah, you gotta loosen that up a little bit. You gotta loosen that up because I I struggle with that. And it's just something you don't be so afraid that you don't try. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's move on to the next C, which is creativity. Um, so for children's, we're going to try and like, you know, we, we wanted to just keep things fresh because we were just virtual. You know, people get tired of staring at a screen all day, especially kids. You know, they get bored easily. So we just tried yeah. a bunch of different things just to see what would work and just to try and make something new and different for them. So we would go to different places. Like we went to Bernheim Forest, which is the county like right next to ours, but so people kind of consider it local well, to us, so. Well, half of it is in Nelson County. It's true. So yeah. like, it's like 16,000 acres mm-hmm. of property and it's half of it of which is in Nelson County. So a lot of people don't realize that that's a door where we were able to open with this mm-hmm. a little bit. Yes. Like we went that di- acknowledgement. Yeah, and we went different places around Bardstown. Um, we went to our friends, farms and their houses and see their animals um my kitchen we did we did a cooking week that was i was doing making ginger snaps while we read the gingerbread man Mm -hmm. you know so just trying different things just to just to get keep the kids interest you gotta have a gimmick right yes yes um some other things we did like we had our pets in there we had puppets and different props i do want to point out this um this bottom picture over here um that's holly our teen librarian She's using her fridge as a magnet board because that was when we were at home. And I just thought it was awesome. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and like, we, we, we made props and you know, there's, there's my cat up in the top with the lion mane on. Um, he loved it. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just trying different things. Um, the picture next to Holly's fridge, um, that painting was made by um, a teenager in our county. She had painted it to display in the library for summer reading 2020. Um, before everything shut down. So we put that in a couple of videos just to, to, to make sure people got to see it and to, to talk about the awesome job that she did. Mm-hmm. And now it is hanging up, so now people can see it now that we're open, so. All right, and then I wanna take a moment to point out, this is part of community, uh, yeah. community connections. We're gonna get to more of that um, in just, just a few short minutes. Um, but this right here, we did a bilingual week. And these are people from our ESL classes partnering with us. We read the English portion. They read the, the other language portion. And like, we recorded those on Zoom. Yes. This was, that. she's actually our Silver Sneakers instructor. Um, she volunteered to read the English part. This is her husband, Enrique. He's from Peru. He read a Spanish part. And this one, because of their sharing the story and everything else, that got like one point. 7,000 views or something like that. And it got viewed in Peru because the family was like, oh my gosh, they were on the tea. Oh, so great. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you want to do is incorporate. This is a PE teacher who went to our gym. <laughs> there, you over there. <laughs> what up? <laughs> um, this is a PE teacher that um, agreed to read a story for us. We did a New Year's resolution one. It was about getting fit. And like the little story, IQ gets fit, little mouse, bench pressing a pencil, it's adorable. Um, a friend in Georgia agreed to zoom in and she teaches um, pre-K 
and she agreed to dress up as a little red riding hood, go out in the forest. I mean, all these people, these are some local authors. They wrote a book. Um, called The Bardstown yeah, Way. Yeah, called The Bardstown Way, and they um, read a story. Right, they and, read their story to us. And, and that then, prompted a whole week of local stories. Uh -huh. It was pretty fantastic. And that then, bottom picture, we did um, the three bears. Mm -hmm. um, that's us and Holly and uh, our David. Our papa bear right here. Our papa bear, and then uh, Stephanie, who also works in children's with us. We zoomed in and just did the three little bears. Those masks, we've had longer than I've been at this library. So I don't know where they came from, but they're handmade, but that's all I know. Um, so that was just something different. And then the kids got to see a few different faces from us as well. Yes. And some faces, like they hadn't seen Stephanie in a while because yeah. she doesn't really like the technology stuff yeah. as much. So that way they got to see her and they were really excited. And that was done. Uh, our library had to do split shifts. I don't know if you all are familiar, if you all did that, but one team of us worked on one shift, another team worked on another shift to where we weren't really interacting as much. I was on the other shift from all of the other programmers. <laughs> not a fun time. So we had to, so that's literally, a couple of them are in their living room and a couple of us are in the library. Like that's how we made that work. Mm -hmm. So, more lemonade. Yeah. All right, moving on to the teens. Um, like we said before, they moved teen night onto Zoom. And so they would meet consistently at their regular teen night time. Um, and some of the things that they did just to just to break up the monotony a little bit and, and everything was they played Jackbox games and Kahoot, which I don't know if you know what some of those are. Jackbox games, it's like um, you, you have like either your computer screen or your TV screen and um, people have their phones and they text, text in a certain code so that they can play on their phones and then they see the game happening on the screen. So Holly would have that on her screen and she would share her screen and they could text in from their houses and play the games with her. Um, they would do screen sharing to watch Netflix and Hulu. She said they watched a lot of The Voice. Um, they would listen to music together. They would do arts and crafts, which was basically just bring your own whatever you have at home and just come do it together and just talk and catch up with each other. Um, she didn't have a huge number, but she did have some very, very loyal followers who still come back now that we're back in person. Do you have a question? Yes. I have a question about how you managed to do Jackbox games without your TV being incredibly inappropriate. Because I just feel like that's just asking our teens are Well, I, I feel like our teens are really great, They're but really, Holly? Yeah, I think they're really respectful. And even now, if they cuss in tonight, I'll be like, you know, cussing. And so now they'll get to where they correct each other. So I think, I don't know, I think a lot of that is them holding each other accountable. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe I just have a, like a... They really respect you, yeah, they, they respect Holly, like, they a lot. They love her. And if she she's like, like, dude, quit. You know, they'll quit whatever foolishness they're doing. I mean, they're fun. They're fun. But, um, yeah, I mean, Holly has a way with teens. She just kind of, like, they just really respect her. I think it also helped. Like, they really appreciated having that FaceTime yes. with her. That she was willing to get on there every week, even if there was only a couple kids there, mm -hmm. and just talk to them. And how are you doing? How is everything going? I think they they really responded to that. And those those two right there in that picture that were yeah. they were her like most loyal ones. They still come every single week. Yeah, like we see them in there all the time. Yeah, they're great. Yes. How did you do Netflix and Hulu? Um, so it was. <laughs> so I had um, like Netflix up on my TV and I turned my screen toward it. We tried that. And then a couple of my teens had Hulu, their own Hulu subscriptions. Um, that was when I had very, like, very small number, like maybe just me and one other team. But we would start our thing at the exact same time and watch it that way. So we did both. The one where we started both at the same time worked better, but um, also just having the the laptop pointed at the TV work too. There's also a thing called Netflix party that I did with with friends where if you if you both if you all have a Netflix subscription like you can it gets you like in a little room together and it and you watch it together and there's a little chat where you can chat on it too. I don't know if you all ever use that, but that's what I did with some of my friends to watch movies. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, and then as far as adults went, um the big thing was keeping the adults moving, keeping them engaged. Uh, this is Tracy again, our silver sneakers instructor. She was fantastic. We had a Zoom login. She had a, this whole setup in her basement. She had a Zoom login here, 
Facebook Live here, and some logged in Zoom, some logged in Facebook, and they just made it work. Um, she pre-recorded some stuff uh, to where we could post it to our library page. Um, she was just fantastic. Um, and I will preface, she does, did not know hardly anything about technology prior to this. And she was willing to go that extra mile because she loves the library that much. Um, this is, I actually grabbed some of our stuff and went to court physical therapy and she did a session on cancer rehab. It was something that was very um, appreciative of, the, like people really appreciated it. Um, this is a craft class. I don't know if your people are as crazy about crafts as my people are, but um, this is um, a local craft store. We had a Facebook event. Uh, th this was another lemonade thing. Facebook events just did not go well for me um, with my adults. It was very, like, I would get a lot of people kind of coming in, but then they'd be like, oh, okay, that's all good, you know. Um, but we did a Facebook event where we streamed it there. We also had a computer set up for Zoom, and we were able to complete the craft there. Um, they were able to order the craft kits prior through the library, and we were able to give them the kits. And they then, picked them up curbside. Yeah, they picked time. them up curbside, which got them to the library. So, so a few of them were like, oh, by the way, can I also get this, 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 and this as well? And we were able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked out really well because people love these two. This is a mother and daughter duo, and they're hilarious. If you've ever heard mother-daughter duos bicker, it's one of the best things ever while they're trying to complete a task. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, and then, of course, we had all these other exercise classes. That's Gigi in her living room doing some Zumba. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and uh, we did keep our book club. Uh, we did virtual. We, ha we have a book club called Books on Tap. Um, we, we go to a bar, read some books. And um, virtual books, on, we had to go virtual. And, uh, like, that, that got pretty good numbers as well. Like, mm -hmm. our number-wise, they weren't great virtual but they were better than doing nothing. That's true. So um, for summer reading 2020, like our main thing was how, do, how are we gonna get books into these kids' hands, especially because we were just curbside, a lot of things were open, a lot of people were not going out. So, you know, the kids didn't have as much of an opportunity to come to the library as they might have, especially mm -hmm. since they couldn't look at books and things like that. So we wanted to make sure that they had something to read so we took what we would normally have spent on our performers besides the two that we moved to virtual and um, we got books. So everybody that signed up got a couple of books, all the children and teens got a couple of books to read so that even if they couldn't come to the library any other time during the summer, they'd have something. Um, with our reading logs, we normally do like a bingo sheet, which I put together every, and we put different things on it, like, you know, to get them to check out different parts of the library, you know, check out a magazine, check out audio, things like that. Um, we couldn't do that with, if, if the kids couldn't get there very often. So, um, we changed our logs to be like time spent reading instead of like completing different little tasks on a bingo sheet. Um, and we got a local artist to draw up like a really cute color sheet. So they would color in a certain spot for each 10 or 20 minutes read. Um, so that way, even if like, even if all, all they had to read was the books that we gave them that summer, you know, they could still log in their time and get something. Um, like we said, we had our two performers that we had already booked. So we moved them virtual. Um, and they, I think they posted them on YouTube and gave us the link so we could share it. And then it stayed up for a certain amount of time and then they took it down. Um, and then we just tried to incorporate the theme into like our story times. This is Mr. Glitters, our little, um, our little unicorn that um, we actually let the people vote on his name on Facebook. So we, you know how you can do the, the, the thumbs up or the smile or the heart or whatever. So we said, give, give it this thing for this name, this for this name. And Mr. Glitters is the name that won. So he showed up in most of our videos over the summer. Sometimes he was like prominent. Other times he was kind of hidden somewhere and they'd have to try and find him. But it was just some, something, something cute to kind of bring the theme. And yeah. he was discount Valentine's Day, wasn't he? He was a discount Valentine's Day thing. Yep. I also have a gigantic dragon that was also discount Valentine's that yes. I had bought, of course, to to use for display and then we shut down. So I was like, they're gonna see this thing. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna make it work. So there's Mr. Glitters. Yes. And then as far as 2021 summer reading, 
Uh, they said we could gather outdoors, so we gathered outdoors. Yes, like we nobody's did. business. We used the great outdoors as much as we could, no matter how hot it was. We were outside. We were sweating. Um, we started out phasing our programming back in. So, like, we start out, we start with a book club over the summer. We're like, okay, let's see how this goes, because we never knew. We tried to like adjust because we never knew. It was so uncertain as to, okay, so they're giving us this, but are they going to take it away? You know, it's, it's like, we don't know what's going to happen with the different mandates, so we have to make it work. So we're like, let's start with the book club. Let's start with a couple of adult exercise classes and see what kind of stuff we can do there. Um, let's start there and then see what happens. And then we were able, okay, as long as we're outdoors, let's, let's go outdoors. So Rachel had this brilliant idea to do a picnic and family story time outside. And it took all of us, it took all three of us to run this thing. Like it was crazy. But you, I, I jokingly say we should have a summer, we should not have summer reading every other year so that when we come back, people are like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. They you loved know, people it. People are like, oh, this was so great. Um, because it's, people were so appreciative. Mm -hmm. um, they were socially distanced outside. They had a craft, they had dinner, they had all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, we, um, here's the teens out at the park doing tie dye, you know, they loved that opportunity. Um, and we just made a point to take everything outside. Now we did have to have some, uh, rain plans. Yes. We have pictures of the rain plans coming yes. up just to, yes. just to see what we had to do because yes. I mean, we were trying to distance as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you move inside, it was like, okay, how are we going to still be distanced? Right. Um, so you'll see those pictures here soon. Right. So we did the phasing. And then here's our bingo log. Do you want to go over the bingo log? Yes. Um, we had some people that really missed the bingo log, and I missed it too, because it's fun. So we brought it back, but we wanted to adapt it because, you know, there's still all those people that were maybe afraid to come out, you know, if didn't want to get sick or things like that. So we um, made, because cause what we do with our bingo is, you know, if you get at least five squares, you know, you get your little prize and then you can keep going if you want to like go for the grand prize or something. Cause some kids like to complete the whole thing. So we did an entire line that was just time spent reading so that if they couldn't get into the library a lot, they could still, you know, cause th they could still do something and still get it done. So that way, no matter whether they're coming in every week or they're only coming in like once a month, they still had the same opportunities to get prizes as everybody else. Right. Um, and we did keep our virtual and our take home options available. Like we would have our, we have craft kits that they can come and pick up. So if they didn't want to um, come into a program, but they still wanted to do like the fun craft, they could come pick up a craft and take that. Um, we did our virtual story times through at least like half of the summer. I think near, near the end of the summer, we kind of fell off a little bit because Everything got crazy, but y'all know summer reading madness. You, right? you know, right? you know how it is. Yes. Um, so we just we tried to accommodate everybody as much as we could with all of that. Yes. And that's the key. It's like you want to be accommodating and serve your patrons. I mean, and that's this is what they were needing. They were needing to get outside. They were needing to see other human beings. So that's what we provided in a safe way. And then what programming looks like now? These are our rain options right here. It's yeah. on the next slide. Look at that. Um, we, we This is um, our biggest community room up at the top. Um, it was, uh, I think that was the morning story time, right? We, we, did, a, we did a couple of uh, Saturday morning like brunch ones with like donuts. Um, and so they, they still sat on their little. Um, oh, no, that was Lammies and Jammies. That's still in the morning, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so they still had their little family picnic area, so that way they were still able to somewhat distance. And then there were a couple of times that um, the rooms, meeting rooms were booked with something else. But uh, most, of, most of our story times were in the evening, so that you know it was dinner time so for the, the working families. Um, so the library was closed, except for the people in the community rooms. So that middle picture, we just used the library itself. So we just everybody moved everything out. back as much as we could and they had them set up. Question. Sure. Did they bring their own blankets from home? They were allowed to, but we also had some, you know, those like those, those oil vinyl tablecloths. Table table we grabbed a bunch of those too because, you know, it was 
we were planning on it being outside so that way if they got a little messy it was easy to clean so yeah we we, we told them like if you want to bring your own absolutely but we had a tub full just in case you needed it mm -hmm. um, and so we just kind of had them use up the whole library as much as they could. We walked around with the book so everybody could see, and we just made it work. Yep. Um, and then we have, we started a hybrid virtual and in-person story time that we do once a week. We do it every Tuesday evening. Um, so what we do is if we have kids there, you know, we, we make sure that they and their parents know ahead of time, part of this is gonna be recorded, but you're not gonna be on the screen at all. We have the little TV, the TV, we have the little laptop set up with Facebook Live for us and the kids kind of sit behind on either side so they can see us. Um, and what we'll do is we'll start, we'll start with our little welcome song, you know, two little hands go clap, clap, clap. And then um, we'll do a story either with a book or with um, puppets or flannel boards, whatever. And then we'll sing a little goodbye song and then we will turn off the camera and then the kids that are there in person, we will do more things like we'll do a song and another book and a craft. So that way um, there's still a virtual option for people that either can't make it to our other times or don't want to come in still for programs. Um, but we, we also have an option available for working families if they do want to come to the library and have a story time. Right. All right. Um, did ever anybody in here do like the take and makes or the make and takes or mm -hmm. whatever we call yeah. them, whatever yeah. verb you put there? Um, we still have those for our children. They love them uh, to the point where they still call about them. Again, I'm not a crafty person. I don't understand this love of crafts people have, but they love it. Um, we do two big crafting programs a year. We're trying to, Usually. we're starting to incorporate more, you know, mm -hmm. kind of phasing back in. But um, we do a trim -a tree, which is Christmas ornaments, mm -hmm. and we do a make and take Valentine's which is we just put out a bunch of supplies and they make Valentine's. For and they, they leave one with us for us to take to a nursing home. Yes. So. Yes. And so, then with the ornament, the Christmas ornaments, they leave one to decorate the children's tree yeah. in the children's area. Yeah. So. And so what we do is we make the kits if they can come to the program. That's fantastic. Yay. Here's your kit. Go sit at a table. Do this. Um, grab a cookie if you want. Um, if they are not, then they can come pick up the kits later. We had a family um, who were sick, who couldn't make it to the make and takes, and they called and were like, we really wanted to come. Is there a way we can get kits? We literally put them outside. Like we put the kits out, yeah, come get them. Mm -hmm. And we put them outside and that family came and got those kits to do it. How appreciative they were. <laughs> it was so, like they just, and that's part of like, because we've seen that um, there was an advocacy of your library and that that's a big component is serving your patrons and having them be appreciative to see what your library's doing, getting your library out, you know. Um, we also stream in-person programs, and we have had to adapt this a little bit. Like our adult kits don't go out as much, so our current adult programmer is working on phasing those out. One branch, they're going like hotcakes, so they're still doing it. So it's all about adapting, figuring out what you what your library system needs as a whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, streaming in-person programs, they are in talks because we do have such, we are fortunate enough to be able to offer such great silver sneaker stuff. Um, some of the nursing homes are like, hey, can we stream some of this stuff? And so our current um, adult programmer, Kimberly, is, uh, is in talks with those mm -hmm. different organizations. Um, again, I've talked about this, very successful. Mm -hmm. Like, and here's an example of some flyers. Yes. So, um, one of the things that was difficult when we were curbside was you have those patrons that are like, I don't know what I want to read. I just want to look around and see what there is. I like to browse. So we started doing something called book bundles. So if they couldn't browse the shelves, we would browse the shelves for them. So what kind of books do you like? What kind of authors do you like? You know, we'd ask them a few questions. We'd look around. We'd look at their checkout history, see what kinds of things they like. And we would put together a bundle of books for them. And we still have some patrons that call and say, hey, can you get me some farm books for my four-year-old, you know, things like that. And it's also become something that we use a lot in our local schools. Um, they've been yes. using them like crazy. The teachers been used, up to date, we currently have like six or seven. We've, we've done six that we've done so, so far, far this in March. March. Yes. Just in March. That picture right there, that, that is a bundle that we made for a teacher. 
So we've got the list of all the books in there. They told us what subject they were looking for. And then we threw in some stickers and some uh, bookmarks. And then um, when we make bundles for like regular patrons, like not teachers, we usually will put them in like a bag or something. But that tub was just, you know, since they're going to a school and they share them around with the different classes, something a little sturdier for them to hold on to. Um, that they gonna make us, me have to get loud over there. They gonna, you can do it. That brings us to our third and kind of fourth C, community connections. Yeah. Um, because that was something that we had to use a lot in order to, to make it through all of this craziness. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the schools since, you know, that's what we were just on. So um, we would do Google Meet class visits when we couldn't go in person. Um, it worked great with like a, a fifth grade class. I did scary stories. They loved it. It did not work with the preschool. They, it, it didn't work. I, could, I couldn't see them. Now. It, there were all these technical difficulties, but we tried. Um, we also made videos like on Google Drive for the teachers to show whenever they needed it. So um, we just did what we could there. We have um, our Head Start. They said that they they bring up our yeah. story times on Facebook sometimes yeah. to show to their kids. Miss you know. Nina, we go there in person uh -huh. now, and Miss Nina, she's like, she's like, I'm so glad you all did those story times. Like, she will pull those up at random for her kids, so, and that helped a little bit too because they got to see our faces when we when yeah. we were able to go in in person. They were able to see us. It was cute. Yeah. And we talked about the book bundles. We're still doing those for the teachers. Um, we've also like taken crafts and activities to the schools. And also book club kits, because we talked about those books that we got in 2020 for summer reading. And then we also talked about how the summer reading numbers were not good that year. So we had a lot of books left over. So we made a book club, we made book club kits for us to check out at the library, but we also donated a bunch of kits to as many schools as we could mm -hmm. just to help them out a little bit, especially like our county schools, they're having some issues with their libraries. They have two librarians for the entire county of schools. So they we go to different libraries, every different schools every day. It's, yeah. it's difficult. So we just wanted to help them out there. And then whatever was left over after that, we took on our open house tour of 2021. Because they go to open houses just about every year. But in 2021, we were very aggressive with the schools. Like, hey, yes. we want to come. Let's come, you know, because we wanted them to know that we were back open. We'd been back open since May. And we wanted to make sure that the parents and the kids and everybody knew that, hey, you can come into the library because we still we still have people call and say, can we come in yet? It's like, yeah, yeah, you sure can, you know. And um, like I went to one school that we have a Lego club that um, Mr. David here, me and David do. Um, and there's a school that a lot of kids go to our Lego club. And so I want to make sure I was at their open house and I could see them and then be like, hey, Lego club's back. Come back. And most of them did come back. They were really excited about it. Yeah. And we've got a lot of future uh, school projects in the works. Uh, just a lot of like our community connections here that have like opened doors here. We just keep, I mean, opportunities just keep coming and coming and it's pretty fantastic. Yes. All right. Um, I'm kind of passionate about making the community connections um, be, because being active in the community does nothing but benefit your library. It really, really does. Um, we have library representation on our local Rotary chapter. Uh, Tara's actually fixing to become president. Yay! Woo. Um, leadership Nelson County. I'm in last year's class. This I'm chick over here is in next year's class. She actually just completed a high ropes course. Yesterday. And I'm very sore. Yes. <laughs> um, we have representation on the community clinic, the NAACP, and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and that's just a start. Um, Kiwanis is kind of courting. You know, so maybe we'll see. Um, but through these connections, we, we were able to offer something to our patrons because we've been talking about all this virtual stuff. And all this vir what about those who don't have virtual access? And we were able to offer, with the help of our local Rotary chapter, um, and there's a handout on the back of your thing. Yes, it's not on mine. Uh, there's a handout on the back of your packet that talks about how we procured our hotspots. Um, we purchased these in 2020. We had hotspots hot and laptops. Those were purchased in 2020 to give our patrons access. We had patrons all the time coming in. I need to do a resume. I don't know how to do this. I've got to get a job and like all these other things. So that we were able to fund this 
through a TechSoup grant that we were able to find. Um, it talks about how we were able to fund the devices. Mm -hmm. um, our local Rotary chapter donated to help supplement hotspots and pays for the service for those hotspots. Um, we also, we talked about our large community room because the Rotary uses that large community room for their weekly meetings. They paid for a mounted projector. Like it was pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, handout on the back of your paper. It has all kinds of information. I'm not the tech uh, person. You really don't want me doing technology at your library. You really don't want me doing that. But um, we gave you the information of those who do. And on the back of that is the sample of um, when they check out the hotspots, like the form they have to fill out. We take a copy of their ID, things like that. And it talks yeah. about on that handout why we had to do that, yeah. you know, just to how yeah. way, what we've learned through checking these out, how to make sure we yes. get them back. We currently have 43 hotspots, I believe, in circulation, and we have gotten over 500 circs on that. Like they've gone out over 500 times as of like beginning of March into February. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a valuable, valuable resource to our community. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't speak enough about that. We, we did at first. Um, what we do is, um, you know, af I think it's the day after, like if they're one day late, the yeah. service gets cut off. Yeah. So they're gonna come back because, oh, now I can't get on the internet. Yeah. And if they want to renew them, they have to bring them in. We have to see it. Yes. There. We've also gone to like, we've been waiving our fines, but we don't waive our fines on tech. Like when the hotspots come in, we'll waive it on like books and stuff. Be like, okay, you know, we understand. But when it comes to the tech, because there's such a long waiting list, like we were going to bring one here to show you guys, but there wasn't one in the library to give. So um, that's kind of, you know, we still charge those fines and it's up to a hundred dollars fine. Yeah. Which, yes. What's your checkout period? Uh, two weeks normally, but um, if when when the, especially when the kids were virtual, yeah. if if it was a student, then we would let them check it out for a month. Yes, and if there's not a hold list, you are able to renew, but you also have to bring it in to renew. We yes. were renewing it over the phone, and then people just started. They just kept them and kept them. Yeah, and so. it's like, it's like this is like help. It's like yeah. bring them in, let us see them. So we put so. that all that on your handout too, so you can learn from from what from we did us, so that you don't yes. make the same mistakes that we did because yes. we did it for you you're welcome <laughs> and uh if you have any questions on there um tara and ann are amazing they've been developing like they've been great at adapting all mm -hmm. the policies and stuff as needed yeah you're welcome all right and then here are just some of the community connections that we've built this is a large list i'm not going to go over this whole list because some of y'all may not know what these are but we're talking about local, um, just local places, like the Go Center. Um, we got prizes from a lot of these people for summer reading, like some of them donated, but we wanted to also give back. So we went local with a lot of our prizes. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, we did $2 gift certificates to our local bakery, which it's like, what kid doesn't love a donut, man? You know, it's like a donut. Uh, we got a lot of gift certificates donated from a local pizza place. Um, Bernheim is always, a, we're actually working with Bernheim now on some future projects, uh, mm -hmm. doing um, some trail tales mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and just getting us out there in the community. And the support is mutual. That's the thing. A lot of back scratching going on, mm -hmm. but it's good back scratching. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, and because of our connections, the list just keeps growing. Like this is literally networking in a nutshell. Like, yes, this is how we do it. Um, uh, Mr. Miller, um, how many of y'all ever been to the Kentucky State Fair? Anybody in here? A few. They, uh, the Border Collie guy, the guy who does, that's him. He's local to us. That's him. Like he lives near us. And so we were like, hey, why? And, and he coached me in basketball many, many moons ago. Um, it's like, Mr. Miller, and he's like, Miss Lacey, how are you doing? And he'll come in, he'll bring, he brought us so many animals for Tales and Tales. For free. So many. For free. For free. Mm -hmm. For free! Like, seriously, like, it was just fantastic. Um, we have a local DJ um, coming for free. 
All he wants is a shout out on Facebook. And he's like, hey, he's like, it's right before wedding season. This is fantastic. You know, and I was like, fantastic. So this is what he's going to do. Um, and we've had uh, local businesses approaching us, wanting us to host uh, books on tap there. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff happening because of the connections. And we would not have made it through 2020 without those connections. We would not have because of what they were able to give and what they were able to do. And we, when, as soon as we were able, we were able to support them right back. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very much, the library wants to be part of the community. You have to be part of the community. You have to get out there. So in 2021, of course it was tales and tales. And so normally we would get performers in that would bring fun animals, but you know, we were just starting back. You know? yeah. So what we did was we looked at our local people and we said, hey, who has animals that wants to come? We got with the extension office, yes. um, with people that we knew. And we these are all like local farmers and patrons who shared their, their pets with us, shared their animals with us for free. Mm -hmm. um, that, that top corner there, this is... Um, we, this we is were, some prime lemonade people right yes, here. We had an alpaca booked to come. And, from Lammies um, and Jammies. They, they had a family emergency that week. And, of course, you know, it's kind of hard to get another alpaca or sheep like we tried. last minute. But we our tried. co-worker has... Um, golden doodles. Golden doodles. And so she brought her, her little baby. This is Poppy dressed in her red pajamas for yeah. Llama Llama Red Pajama. Um, and the kids loved it. The kids didn't know. And they loved it. Yes. 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 Um, that turtle right there, that is Shelly the turtle. My brother-in-law is an endangered species biologist, and I asked him if he knew anybody that had, like, a pet turtle or toad or anything like that that we could borrow. And he just went out into the wild and found one. And it's like, here you go. Like, <laughs> thanks. So Look at the joy on this kid's face. He's proud. I mean, he's, I've never seen someone so excited to see a duck in my entire <laughs> life. Like, he was so excited. I think, I think the duck kind of went like, at him and he was like, ah, it was so fantastic. <laughs> so, and this is Mr. Miller, like he has a farm with all kinds of stuff. We actually called him for this to get us a sheep. And uh, he was like, uh, we actually have a sheep show. That's yeah. the thing. I didn't know that. I was like, oh, okay. And he even, he said, if I had one that was tame enough, you could come put it in your car. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's fun. I was like, let me know. I'll come wrestle a sheep. It's all good. And then this is a local pig farm. This one made me a little nervous, a little, a little bit nervous. Uh, because the pig farm, if you know the ending of the pig, it's not very happy. And um, she's there, she's actually a student. Like we got her through the extension office. Um, she was holding this pig and the kids were like, oh, it's so cute. And then the parents were like, so when does it go to the finishing barn? And can we buy this at Boone's? It's the local butcher shop. I'm like, oh. I was like, everyone is happy. It's Everyone's not that kind of story happy. time, guys. So, yeah. It's like. It's like build your little house of bricks, little piggy. We do the version where all the pigs live. Like, come yes. on. <laughs> so, and that's just something. Uh, this little girl here, um, her grandparents, uh, her grandparent is Tracy, our silver sneakers instructor. And she brought us a bearded dragon. There was a picture earlier of me in a dragon suit holding this little bearded dragon. Um, I mean, you just, you know, making all the lemonade. We didn't have to hire any performers because we had them all here for free. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that concludes our presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Here's us again. Yes. Here's us. Uh, this Halloween. was Halloween. Like I said, we're a theme. Holly was a mermaid. Um, again, if you have any questions, children's, anything like that, call us. Um, if you have any questions about teens, Miss Holly, and she's actually here, so if you have questions, like there you she can is. go tackle her real quick. Um, adults, Kimberly Burton is our new awesome adult programmer. She's fantastic. Like, we love her. We. She is a doll. I love her. And then um, hot spots. These are these are your two gals. We actually put our assistant director on your paper as well. We didn't put him on the PowerPoint because he's a little he, he, he's a little shy. So, um, but yeah. And if you have any questions now, we'll be more than happy. We have candy and lemonade in the back. Lemonade packets for you to put in your bottle of water. Because um, we free. like a theme. Because we love a theme. And our business cards are back there as well. Feel free to take one.